Welcome to the Cybersecurity Competition Federation Show. I'm Dan Manson. I teach computer information systems at Cal Poly Pomona and serve as principal investigator for a National Science Foundation grant to help form an umbrella organization over cybersecurity competitions. The Cybersecurity Competition Federation can support the development of skill at a large scale by bringing cybersecurity competitions under an umbrella organization which will help players of all ages and skill levels identify a point of entry into a continuum of cybersecurity competition experiences. With a focus on communication and promotion, the CCF maintains the autonomy of competition creators, supports their business models, and does not interfere with their sponsorship or funding sources. This week, we have on-site coverage from the Cyber Patriot Camp at Sacramento City College in Sacramento, California. Under the leadership of Steve Linthicum, Sierra College professor and deputy sector navigator for the Chancellor's Office, five Cyber Patriot camps are being held at Sacramento area community colleges this summer. Let's hear from last week's camp. What do you like about what you're doing this week? Um, some insights about the computer and what I should look out for. Um, for me, it's more like uh, the like controlling what comes in and out of your computer, like you're in control of your stuff kind of feeling. I like that. You're going to be involved in a competition later today. Are you, are you looking forward to that? Yeah. I'm totally looking forward to it. I'm just getting myself mentally prepared and everything. Have you played Cyber Patriot? Is this your first time you've seen it? Yeah, I've played it, I think, um, this whole year. I've been, um, been doing a whole bunch of Cyber Patriot. Were you on a team this year then? Yeah, I was. What I was actually. the experience like? The experience was actually pretty crazy. Everybody's always trying to find uh, find something that nobody else can find to protect that computer and um, it's a lot of uh, uh, talking really fast and throwing messages at each other. Do you like competition? Yeah, I really like competition. It's always really fast and very fun paced. And, uh, You'll be playing again this year? Yeah, I'll definitely be playing again next year and all the years to come. You're a, a mentor today. There are going to be teams this fall from Sacramento that are playing in Cyber Patriot. I'm sure they're going to um, benefit by having um, technical mentors help them this fall. Are you thinking about being a mentor for a team during the season? Definitely, yeah. I've had a great time this time and I'd love to do it again. What do you think it takes to be a good mentor? Patience, um, know how to troubleshoot, and just have fun with it. What do you like about it? The kids. <laughs> you know, the, the actual teaching them early about mm -hmm. what needs to be done. And Do you have some community college students here as technical mentors? What's the value for, for them and the value for the students in having these technical mentors? Well, first of all, uh, you're going to find with uh, Cyber Patriot that your typical classroom teacher, your, your middle school or high school teacher, doesn't have the background in cybersecurity really to be teaching the content. So we can bring in technical mentors who are community college students who have um, gone through a number of these courses and developed a level of expertise uh, that they've learned from their professors. And uh, they can come in and they can serve the role of that, but we would normally characterize as content teacher, and uh, it gives them, that is the community college students, a resume item. Uh, oftentimes they're building a resume, and if I were an employer, for example, and I saw that a community college student who didn't have a great deal of uh, experience, work experience in the arena, had actually taken that step, that step of volunteering to serve as a technical mentor to teach uh, high school and middle school students. Cybersecurity, it shows a commitment. All right, by starting young, do we get a better mix of um, students going into this field? Do we get better diversity? Do we get more passion? What are the values of starting young? Well, starting young, I think we get students before they have the opportunity to have a huge fear of coming to college or um, before we lose all of the women who could possibly ever be interested in cyber. It was kind of refreshing to come in and see some females in the room. Um, 
Um, I know that when I go by the classes for people who just enrolled straight out of high school, we tend to lose a lot of those students. So you know, this is important to the campus that we have a diverse population, including a better split across the genders. Is this something that you'd like to see uh, Sac State, uh, Sacramento City College do more of in the future? Or? I would love to see this become an annual event in the summer. Uh, this and if there are other things we could do during the school year to keep the momentum going, that would be fantastic. We continue this week with Inside the Game. Jason, welcome back. Thanks, Dan. Hey, everybody. We just saw a clip of a Cyber Patriot boot camp at Sacramento City College. And we had uh, mentors at the camp from community colleges. Now, it's, it's my belief that every community college in the country has this opportunity. Everyone that's doing IT, but certainly everyone that's doing cybersecurity should have their students be doing outreach and mentoring to high schools and middle schools where the kids have the passion to learn cybersecurity. What do you think? I, I, I'm a big, big, big fan of the camp format. You know, I remember when I was a young kid and we went to camp, we got little merit badges and you learned how to make fires. You learned how to orient with a compass. Listen, it's the 21st century. I don't necessarily need those skills anymore. What I need are cyber skills. And I love the idea of a cyber camp. And there's a chicken and egg issue that Steve Lenthicum referred to where students need to get experience. Well, how do they show that they're ready to be hired? I think mentoring um, of kids doing competitions, teaching cybersecurity to kids that have a passion for cybersecurity in a competition format is a great resume builder. And if I was an employer, you know, someone who came in and said, well, I haven't really worked in the field, but this is all the mentoring I've done, and these are the results of my mentoring, I think that would sell the person. You, it, it does, and I think not only does it create a sense of camaraderie and esprit de corps, but I think a huge part of it too goes all the way back to the Greek concept of citizenship. And acquiring the knowledge and acquiring the skills for yourself is one thing. And there's nothing wrong with that, and we all need to do that at some point. But the concept of having to come back and mentor other students that aren't that distance from you on the knowledge scale, I think really is a part of cyber citizenship. And community colleges need better talent coming in the door. We use the analogy of trying to build the cybersecurity programs as Division I schools. Well, the more that you get to work with kids that are feeding into your community college before they get there, the better talent you're going to have coming in. Absolutely, and I think part of it too, for me, fits that theme of a community college and the purpose it serves for its community. Also, the diversity aspect. You know, the, the last person we had, the dean, talked about, you know, in the classroom, she doesn't see enough diversity. Well, I, I really believe starting in seventh grade, we can, over time, get more diversity. Right, and I, I think more and more, for me at least, part of the answer of why is there a lack of diversity, I think, again, we all agree. We talked when we talked about the, the gender issue about that. There is a lack. Well, it's because people are being pre-filtered. So I, I agree with you, Dan, that we just need to start earlier. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Dan. Jason, I'm really glad I didn't have to call your mom. I'm glad you didn't either, Dan. How is Uncle Jimmy? What kind of challenges does Uncle Jimmy have for us this week? Well, you know, that guy's been really hard at work. I had a really good discussion with Uncle Jimmy when I was in New York visiting him last week. Um, and not only is he really working hard at learning programming language so he can build challenges for people, but this week he has a crypto challenge. So he's gotten into cryptography as well. That's great. Are you getting uh, some uh, people uh, emailing uh, Uncle Jimmy and uh, trying to solve the challenge? Yeah, you know that guy's emailing me and calling me every night and telling me about the people that email him like Jens the Legs is back from week, week one, solving I, I, week two. I like that name. Yeah, whoever this is, they're pr they seem to be pretty talented, so I hope they keep it up. And are there some uh, creative uh, solutions that you're finding? Yeah, you know, Jens the Leg for week two looked at really what was a buffer overflow type challenge um, and had an interesting solution where he walked through step by step to see how big that buffer was and then how much data he had to shove into it to get past and overflow it. 
Terrific. So what kind of challenge do we have this week? Yeah, it's, it's a crypto challenge. Uh, Uncle Jimmy didn't tell me too much about it, but I've tried it. I've played with it a little bit, and I think it's fun. It's definitely of a medium difficulty. I, th there's a couple steps you have to go through in order to really deductively figure out what it is. Um, but once you know what it is and figure out how to decode it, the answer is right there in front of you. Well, we'll be looking forward next week to see um, how well people were able to solve this challenge. And if they want to try it, where do they go? Um, if you want to try it, go to UncleJimmy'sChallenges.com. That's it, UncleJimmy'sChallenges.com. Um, you can tweet him if you need a tip. I know he's uh, private messaging a few people. And then when you have the answer, you can email it to him at Jimmy at UncleJimmy'sChallenges.com. Thank you. Thanks. Next week, we will tell the story of EC Council's Cyber Olympics and the University of Maryland's Cyber Padawans. If you have a competition you would like us to cover in a future show, please contact us at cyberfed.org. I'm Dan Manson. See you next week.